para photos of their puppies as well. <laughs> They're beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah, the California Botanic Garden uh, has taken that on now as their um, that's their logo as the Matilla poppy. Oh. Wow. Where's the California Botanical Gardens? Oh, uh, here in Claremont. It, oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. The name before. Nice well, it, it used to be. Yeah. Well, the name before was. Rancho Santa Ana Botanic Garden. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but we've we've broadened to the state now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Hello. 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 Okay. I sent that Thank out to everybody morning. just in case. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Hi, let's go. Hi, Laura, you're, in, you're, in the, you're in the beautiful forest. By the way, if anybody has like two minutes at the end of class, I'm in puppy decision dilemma mode. So <laughs> anyone Cooking? has anything to bear on that? <laughs> hey, you know, I have a question. When I, sh when I end the class, do, does that end it for you guys too? Or can you still be in there? Yeah. It does. It does. It the host leaving closes it. Okay, because yeah. I was wondering. Sometimes people are talking, and I, I don't know whether to close it or not. And I'm uh, I'm sitting there going, well, huh. no. So I I, I I I thought that maybe because maybe it stayed up and people can talk. I don't know. There there is a way that you can assign someone else to be the host. If yeah, you yeah. Want yeah. The, the meeting to continue. Yeah, I, I can do that. You can it's do not that. that hard. Uh, okay, I, good to know. We're, we're probably all ready to take a break. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. When are we ready to take a break from? Oh, I, I meant at the end of class. <laughs> oh. <laughs> are you guys ready to take a break? Coffee break right now? No. Walk around the... No, I'm just joking. But that is a thought. I've wondered about that. Uh, taking a break maybe an hour ahead. Like, I don't know, sometime in there. Although well, you, I, you can take a break anytime you want. You can just, yeah. you know. So that's I did fine. discover that. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. see. Yeah, you don't have to. Pay, and then you know you always have the recording. So, all right, I'm gonna mute everyone. Let's let's mute and let's hit our cameras. Looks like everybody is muted. Now. Okay, good. Make sure you um, uh, hit your camera. And let's see. Oh. Let me hit. Okay, let's get to it. You know, what? you know. By the way, I think today we'll draw with a brush. You don't have to. You can draw with a pencil. But I know on a lot of light things, I like to just because you don't need to be clinical about this. So I've had a few little reports that people have a problem with the Matia Hall puppies. Um, yeah, because they're white. Yeah. <laughs> like the paper. That makes sense. So we need to think of them with the same value range as clouds, but with, with a stiffer edge. So, all right. So let's see here now. So what, here's what I do. Uh, take, I'm going to take red, yellow, and blue, well, actually, since we're doing the value study first. Well, let's just do very light, very light to start off with. I'm going to draw this about here. Um, I'll, I'll uh, zoom in on that. Uh, 
That may be a little too light. I'm just using the Prussian blue. Okay, we have some little ones up there. I'm drawing too light. Okay. It's weird that this camera just pushes everything to the max. If I'm light, it makes it lighter. If I'm dark, it makes it darker. If I'm, if I'm saturated, it makes it more saturated. <laughs> it's just everything. It takes everything and pushes it to the max. So really light with these things in the background now. That's probably too dark. And then let's draw around some of our little friends here. And this is just a comp, so you don't have to get this perfect. Maybe we have our sort of three amigos right here, right? So maybe we want that to be our focal point. And a little, little guy in the shadows over here. Friend and a couple little ones over there. enough a few things overlapping um, so what we're the way here's the way we're going to approach it we're going to first outline everything very light and then we're going to come in with some very light shadows very light remember these are like one of the whitest whites you're going to see in nature. Some very light shadows. In the comp, they don't have to be. You're just wanting a certain value range. So just a few little shadows in there, here and there. Is this ultramarine blue? So it doesn't really matter the color because we're doing a value study, but uh, I'm using the, what do you call it, Prussian blue. Okay. Yeah. And so what we're going to do I'll just sort of mimic the same procedure so you get it a few times. So what we're going to do is, now the lights on the green vegetation, the lights on it are pretty pretty dark. I mean, the lightest light on the is, is still much darker than the, uh, what do you call it, the poppies. So Let's come into those first with a kind of a light color around things. Excuse me, Rob. Yeah. I, I just came in and um, I had a photo you sent a few days ago and then I just got a new photo today. Which one are we doing? We're doing the one from a couple of days ago. The, the other one was, uh, was from Darsha and she just she just gave it to everybody if somebody wants to do something simpler. Okay, so great. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Is Dorsha taking this class? Yeah. Hi Dorsha. <laughs> Hi. Who's that? <laughs> it's Pam from Claremont. Yay, Pam. Hi. Okay, so, so that photo is from the California Botanic Garden. 
Oh, I was, you know, I was, a lot of those poppies are, are growing in Claremont. There are a lot of them around the college colleges too. Nice. Okay. Hey, see ya. Okay. How about that? That's pretty cool. And then we have a few, and you know, we don't, we don't have to hit the, the little stems out here really dark first. We'll just hit the light things in them. Rob, did you moisten the paper generally or no. are you only using water from the brush? I'm only using water from the brush. So you see how light all that is, right? I just want to stress that. Because it could be that maybe you're getting too dark too fast. Um, for those of you that are having some issues. So now I'm going to come into them and go into them a little bit darker with some of the darker areas. And some of those darks come right up to the poppies. And that sort of, it kind of gives them a little bit of a silhouette. That's what makes them really, I was going to say pop. <laughs> Maybe the wrong word. So for this part, you're just kind of picking the darks and where to put them as a way to sort of frame the lights, or are you coming or going to go generally through the whole thing? I mean, like, is it like a compositional concept or is it more like you're casting shadows from the blooms? So th these are just basically a lot of the darks that are in there already. And then what we can do is come in with our darker darks right around, let's say, our focal point here. So I'm just I'm just slowly building up to the darker darks because they're pretty dark in there. But you see how this these kind of darks give you I mean, they really bring you right to that area. So right, I'm doing both. I'm sort of mimicking what's there and then also emphasizing the darks that are around maybe the areas I want to talk about. So now what I'll do is I'll put a lot of dark in the areas I want to talk about, let's say this, and maybe less in other areas, even though there is a lot of dark down here. I'm probably going to put this all in shadow, or mostly. And then just really vamp up or ramp up, or whatever the word is, um, amp up, that's what it is, huh? uh, the, <laughs> the darks around, around this focal point here, which is something cameras generally don't do. Now, in this piece, kind of pick these ones around here just, just to emphasize. So I kind of found a little grouping and then, and you know, a lot of, a lot of photographers are coming back through there and really um, pop the contrast around there on Photoshop. So maybe back here, not so much. And then we have that sky. I still want this darker than the sky, so I don't know whether to make this darker or that lighter. Maybe I'll put in the sky first and then see. Now, what's going to happen here is it's going to get complicated around these things. So I, I think probably we should probably do these first. especially underneath them. 
And then as you come out back around the tops, that way you don't get your paint all drying out on you. I suppose you could moisten this area though. Maybe we'll do that next time. Now this is about the same value as that, so. It's gonna be a lot of adjusting. Thing is, I don't want, I, mean, I know a lot of these darks back here are almost the same color and almost the same value as a lot of these things up here, but I wanna push the distance, so I'm gonna make that a little bit lighter. And of course, there's a little, a little bit of value difference in the orange part, but not much. Rob, is this your photo? Yeah, I'm just wondering if it is or not. I forgot. Because it looks like some uh, Matillaha puppies that are in Desconso. <laughs> I think I tried to paint once. If it is, it's from. Um, it's probably from uh, Eden Canyon. Oh, okay. That's mostly. Or also I take them down in the Arroyo too. So I did take some this time, but I think I'm not sure if I got this from years ago or if I had this in a, I just had, I have a folder that says Matia Hall Poppies in it. So I'm not sure if I took that or not. I could probably look in there. I'm certainly Thanks. taking a lot like this. Yeah. Okay, and so I'm just going to move up. <clears throat> and still with a light blue, I think would be just fine. Or maybe, let's see, if you take a little bit of cad red and put it in with your, your, uh, what do we call that? Uh, Pull this down a little further. With the, uh, gosh, Prussian blue. Prussian. can never remember those names. I say it like 20 times a day. You know, my mind just registers that, that blue. <laughs> it's that blue. Not that blue, that blue. You know what, I, because when I'm looking at the palette, all I see is color. I don't see names. I don't, I don't even register names. Same with people. I do the same with people. I don't see names. But like, I never forget your face. <laughs> it's imprinted in my brain forever. I've got maybe what, what you call a true photographic memory. Not the kind of memory where you, where you read things and remember it, but the kind of me memory where you, when you look at things, you can almost completely like I might be a good detective because I, if I walked out into a like a scene and I was supposed to remember the details, I'm the guy you'd want on that thing. Because <laughs> I'll be like, hmm, now there was a uh, gum wrapper uh, over in the corner, the left hand northeast corner. Anyway, all right. So let's go again. Let's just all right. Coming around here, and we have this wonderful little poppy, a couple other little poppies, another big one over there. And again, these aren't really, I'm just roughing them out. It's just a comp. Probably could have moved that over that way a little bit more, but oh well. I'll put my main focal point. Generally in that area. A little one over here. OK. 
kind of go in and out. Okay. Good enough. So virtually with the same color. Got a neat little shadow in there. Very light shadow. Yeah, I'm not wetting anything down. I'm just painting on dry. Mostly I want this one to be in shadow. There's little flicks of shadow on these little guys over here. It's it's basically on the bottom of them. I did this. I did a little warm up before class. You see, I did that exactly the same way. So, is that cold press or hot press paper? Uh, I'm just using uh, the normal cold, cold okay. press paper. Yeah. Are you going to do your final on hot press or cold press? I was just going to use cold press paper. Okay. Was I supposed to use hot press today, you guys? No, but I no. forgot if I said no. anything about it because if I did, I'll oh, but, but you love doing it. Yeah. So I said, anyway. Okay. Yeah, then. I certainly could. But, uh, you know, I really love this paper too. I have to say, it was just, it was just sort of like. Uh, Last, last week was just kind of like going home, <laughs> going back, revisiting the old days. I think the, one of the other reasons was after I switched to the cold press paper, uh, I, I, I have fallen in love with this too. And the, the reason why is because it's so much faster. <laughs> and I'm, you know, as a watercolorist, you're kind of a little more impatient. Okay, so... Um, Take the Prussian and mix it with a little lemon. Now that that's going to make it really yellowish. Now, and some of the little bulbs are, are yellow, so we could use that there. But I'm, I'm saying mainly you want to dominate it with the Prussian, which is a bluer green. So you need a little bit of that yellow in it. Yeah, that's, boy, that's saturated. Okay, so then add this, if you wanna gray it a little bit, add the slightest amount of cad red to that. Yeah, there, there we go, that's better. And that's pretty strong for what I want. So just add water. And all I'm doing right now is just basically just sort of covering. This is just your first go around. These are the lightest ones, so you don't have to worry about any sort of accuracy. You don't have to be as accurate with these things as you might think. And then back here on this hill in the background, I think I'm going to push. I'm going to push a little more ultramarine blue into it because I think the ultramarine blue. There we go. Just a little more blue in it. Just to kind of vary the blue. Pull it, yeah. I'll give mine a little bit higher on the side here. See how it's it's kind of level on the piece? And I, I want mine to go up a little higher on the side. Why? Because, you know, it kind of keeps your eye in. And what 
what else? So then I'm going to add a little more Prussian blue to my lemon yellow and, and a touch, just a touch of the red. You see that red will gray it right away. And so we'll um, use the red, like maybe 1% one, 1 of red or something. I'm still coming in with some little darks. This is all in shadow. Probably throw a little bit more shadow over this. And some of these are pretty Make sure you when you put those in, we'll talk about this later too, but you're putting twigs in, make sure you get some overlapping because if they're all side by side, it's kind of funny. And I should have probably had a couple more of these poppies overlapping too. But again, a great, a great reason to do a warm up piece. That's a little bit, little bit darker. I don't think we need anything back there. Some of these go right over the poppy. It can kind of makes them feel all nestled in. And now go for your darks. Maybe not the darkest darks, but mostly the dark. Same colors, but just probably, you know, more paint and less water. Probably more Prussian in there. That's, that's really aggressive. So now I'm just kind of carving it out. So these darks, not quite as dark as these, but still. Just pumps them up into the foreground. We'll let that one hang out back there. There's a real negative painting to this. Sure. Oh, yeah. Basically. You're, you're cutting back into the areas. And then let's, let's go ahead and really smack a couple of darks like red and right around our focal point mainly. There's a couple down here too, but yeah. So what you can do on this top part is just, just lay down some water. Way out there. 
not right on the poppies, just right around them. And I'm going to use ultramarine blue. I guess we could just go like that. Let's just let's try it the other way. Last time we started inside and worked out. This time we'll start get the main area go, going. And then just sort of work that in. That works pretty good. And if you want some cloudy in there, I'm not sure I like those clouds out all that much, but you know, you could do something like, I mean, I, I don't think clouds are necessary. You know, these things alone silhouetted up in the sky, you got a lot of good breakup in there, so. One of those pieces where I'm not sure it needs at least not too many clouds. It kind of almost starts looking like them, you know, so. If I put a cloud in there, I certainly don't want a hard edge cloud. And sometimes clouds are hard edged. So. I definitely would want to complement that with very soft edge clouds so we don't have the competition between the two. And then for the for the star of the show, so some cad, cad yellow and a little bit of cad red. Ooh, that cad red will get away from you, so be careful. You want a lot more cad, cad yellow in it than cad yeah, red. Let's see right here, got that one. Just and whatever, pop them in there. We'll throw shadows and things over them later. Not every single one of them you can see it either, so. You certainly don't want the same amount. You, every, every once in a while, I just want a little taste, but you know, not every one you want like this, like an egg. <laughs> they really do add a lot of life to the piece, though, don't they? And parts of them are in shadow too. Now. You might want to use, if, you might be tempted to use, let's say, blue in the shadow. I mean, like any color will work, but that'll make you a really gray color. I would suggest adding magenta to the color in the shadow. It's going to get you a little more orange in there. So that's probably, I don't know, it's not too realistic. So then maybe. And maybe you don't care. Maybe you just want it to pop. If, if you really, if you really want these things to, the color, add, add a little bit of magenta to that color. And it's, you know, magenta does have blue in it. But maybe that's jumping a little too much. So I'll switch down, add a little bit of ultramarine blue to this color. Let's see what we get now. Is it too... I mean, it's actually more realistic. So somewhere in between the two, whatever you like. So that would be more analogous, right? And this would be more complementary. So we had the opposite, more of the opposite color, which would be blue. Here we added more of the, like a red violet, which does have a little blue in it, but it, it doesn't depart with the color. And so you get more saturation and this would be one of those times when you might want a lot of saturation in your color usually the best idea is to start off analogous and if it gets to you know disneyland and then and you want a little bit of realism just throw a touch of blue in there that's the way i i literally think that to myself too <clears throat> Because I worked at the st studio so long and did all these, I did so many comp, little comps. My comps w would be about, let's say, maybe um, 
Oh, about eight by 10. About the size of my, my notebook here, let's say nine by 12. I would do a comp that big and it would be all in Disney colors, you know, and I'd, I'd have to think, okay, get my head in the Disney thing. Totally analogous. So now when I paint it, I'm like, okay, it's too Disney. You gotta get more real. All right. That's pretty good. Let's see. Whoops. So if you want to take a photo, let's see. Let me make that a little bit smaller for you. There. There's a photo. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Can we also take a photo of the other watercolor you just showed us like 15 oh, minutes ago? Sure. Okay, thanks. I do, I, I always do a little warm ups. That was for the beach one we did. I usually like, like, you know, like a half an hour for a class, I'll lay my stuff out. And I sit down and it just kind of <whistles> helps me get into it. Thank you. You're welcome. Just helps me to get my mind into it. I don't like to be cold. And you might want to do the same thing. When you're, when you're getting ready for class, lay out your stuff, you might want to take five minutes and do a quickie, you know? Okay. Let me get you going. Let's see. Rob? Yes. Would you mind bring that back up again? Oh. I'm sorry. For that, some reason, my timer, my timer is on and I can't get it turned off. Oops. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, wait, which one? Both of them? Uh, I got yes, that one. I just, okay. And the you other want the one. Other one? That one, yes. Is that one? That one. Um, oh, you know, that was a lot of fun. I was just—I just saw this. There's some flowers. It was from another class. Uh, really? Now that would be the soft-edged approach, which we could do. It doesn't seem to capture. Unfortunately, it doesn't, you know, they have these really hard, crackly edges. They're like paper. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I was more focused on that. But anyway, whatever. Let's see. Yeah. They're kind of crackly looking. Now, I wanted to draw these out with a brush. Why? Because it keeps you looser and... So I would use the Prussian blue and the lemon yellow and a touch of the, um, so you're basically making the green uh, of the stems and leaves and things. You know, maybe, maybe on these ones up here that we'll want to use blue. You know, why don't we just use something bluer? That makes sense. You know, let's just do it in ultramarine blue. Sorry, but you'll use that color you just made up, so. So just very loosely. Ah, let's drop my brush. There we go. Very loosely. You know, determine where you want your hillside back there to be. And certainly it doesn't matter because we were going to put blue in that color anyway. Maybe up a little higher.
Doesn't matter, you're gonna go over this, just remember, okay? All right, and then we have this little little lovely, lovely one right there. And if you don't see those lines around it, if they bug you, just pat them down a little bit. It'll just fade into the, uh, the color of the sky. But if, if it bugs you to have the lines around there, then what you can do is just take a little water and dissipate the edges. We're going very light, so you're going to be darker on there. So we got this other one here. A little large with that, Rob. Big one over here. And there. We've got some sort of overlapping each other too, which is nice. Little, you want to connect a few of them. You certainly don't want them all side by side, very similar sizes. Some variation to these. There's one behind. And we're just drawing, just like you draw with a pencil. But you get used to drawing with a brush. There's a few little things back here, so. Load up again. Now we have our main ones here. I sort of want to get into those first. So if that's there, it's, it's all the way up. And over there, there's that top one. And keep it nice and light. We have this one out in front of it. Really overlaps it nicely. It almost looks like a starfish or something. Has anyone seen the movie The Octopus Teacher? My <laughs> Octopus Teacher? Mm -hmm. It's a documentary. Yes. Did you yes. like it? Yes. It is extraordinary. Absolutely. It's a tearjerker. I, it's that's, really good. I, that's why I haven't seen it because I think I'm going to cry. Well, but I've yeah. never cried over Octopi before. I've but it's beautiful. It's, 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 it's beautiful. Again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make myself see it, but I, I know it's going to be sad. Bring your box of tissues. Octopi are so intelligent. They're such interesting creatures. Isn't it amazing that they're here? They are this almost prehistoric sort of animal and turn out to be so, so, so smart. smart. It makes you think, it makes you really think about all the other animals that lived before us. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, you guys. And they say, well, the reptiles and whatever. You ever look at, I mean, I, I grew up with lots of reptiles around because of where we lived and my little brother was really, he was like an amateur herpetologist. And I, I just remember, they look at you funny. I mean, they look right in you. They're, they're studying you, you know, and they, they kind of get all curious. And look, you think, wow, lizard brain, how, how much could be going up there? I don't know. A lot of animals do that, by the way. You grow up with animals. You realize, and there's a lot going on up there. Rob, You're thinking about things, yeah. Rob, yeah. The sadness is that you realize their life isn't that long. And not in not, movie, not in our perspective of time, but yeah, right, exactly. But the sadness is that 
that's what you realize. You wanted to keep going on, but that's the cycle of their life, and it, it goes through it. It's just a fabulous movie. Maybe it would be better. Who knows? Maybe life would be better that way. Maybe we'd live it a little bit. Exactly. Longer. It teaches you that, you know, we're not here that long either. We're not. We're not here very long. It's a wonderful movie. Hmm. Sounds like something to watch. Something worth watching. Which isn't very much nowadays. <laughs> did, did anybody say it's Netflix? Is it on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Okay. Oh. O- octopus teacher. My o- the my teacher the octopus. My teacher the octopus. Or the octopus my teacher. Okay. Something like that. It's got octopus and it's got teacher in it. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. A few of these. You see how we just draw them out. Thing is, if you draw them out really dark, um, you're never going to get away from that line. This way, when you draw them out light, you can creep. You can creep the background in. You, there's a lot of play in there, so that's why you want to keep the. Now, when we creep the blue back here, don't worry about the stems, because if you look at the stems, they're all darker, right? So you can just go right over the stems with the blue, with the sky. And and then just go right back over the sky with the stems, because it's all got blue in it. It's fine. Certain colors you can do that with. And after a while, you realize what, I mean, like, for instance, if a green also has blue in it and you also want to make it darker, then you should just be able to go right over that and it shouldn't be a problem. Now, for some of these yellow, if you want to catch all these little yellow bulbs on there, then I would suggest um, painting them in first. Like, watch, a little lemon. I'll do a couple of them. I'm not going to put every one of those things in there, but a little lemon and a little Prussian blue and just just plop a couple of those round ones in there. Maybe a little round little bulb. They're bulbing up right now. I see I keep seeing them. They're all blooming like crazy. I've been going out for my walks lately. I've seen all kinds of these, and, and plus the uh, the jacarandas are going nuts too. Every single day, because I have them right out on my porch. But I went on. I went and checked out Marengo Street the other day. You can throw a little. You might, if you like, you can throw a couple of little bulbs right in there. Just, just as little hints and telling you where things are. I don't know if I'll want any more than that. But you notice I'm making them a little larger in the foreground, right? Smaller back here. Even though this is maybe 10 feet away from us and this is maybe three feet, still there's still a little bit of perspective in there. So, I think the thing to do here is to take your Prussian blue and mix it with some lemon. And that's going to get too saturated. So, Make sure if you throw a little bit of 
a little bit of cad red in there that will because red and green right that'll make it a little bit grayer see what that color is give that a test something like that maybe a little bit bluer if you need a little bit bluer add a little more pressure like that I'm sorry, could you say that again? I went right past me. I just missed it. The Prussian and the lemon and then just, just a little bit of... Um, cad red. Cad red, yep. The cad red will gray it a touch. And if you want to, you could just go like that for your little bulbs. Just leave them like that. Oh. Just nice and we're just throwing it in lightly first. Go ahead and vary your colors too. Go ahead and throw something in a little bit more blue. It's a it's a it's a interesting green. Make sure we're uh, muted, okay? And you certainly could wet all this down, but I don't see any real reason for it. Maybe if things are drying too quickly, if you're a little slow, then all you need to do is go like this. You can come over here and just wet all this down first. See, you can do all that. That way you can get too many kind of hard, hard breaks in there. You know, I kind of like this this idea. It's working out good. So I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna go around all my flowers and the background and all of this with water. Uh, I mean, it has a little color on it, but the truth is, is that I'm just really just using it for the water. See, that's just gonna blend right into my color, so I don't care that it has a little green in it. Yeah, I like that better because we'll get more watercolor effects. So Prussian, lemon, cad red, throw it in there. Yeah, that works. I'm, I'm getting too aggressive though. So I'll thin that out. Back here, I want it bluer. So I'm adding more blue to my green. Um, ultramarine blue. 
is what I added to this. Really simple and fun. So having done that, and it seemed to work better when I laid down the water first, that's what I'm gonna do in the sky. But I'll give you a minute to catch up because I know I paint like a lunatic. So Rob, yeah. I decided to proceed differently, but I have a question. So I started with the <clears throat> yellow dots. Okay. The, and then I did the shadows within the flowers. Oh, okay. And I want to ask you, is there a method? I'm looking at the photo and I'm trying to imitate the photo, but is there a a way to proceed when you put shadows inside those white flowers. Just very light. Just just start off with the lightest shadows first and get into the darker parts. You know, the deep parts, which aren't very dark, but they're darker than the rest. I put the, the lightest shadows in first. Maybe like just dirty water. Uh, in this case, probably, I mean, very, very light. Hold on, I'm gonna have to turn on my air conditioner. Sorry, it's getting hot. Okay, so in this case, I am going to just throw down some water. Here's a hair from my brush. Just some water. And you don't have to put it right up next to, you don't have to put the water right up next to the flowers. And just remember with the water too, you can just paint over all this where the stems are, you can paint right over that because you're going to go right over that. So could you imagine painting around all those stems? People do that too. It makes me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> what are you doing? Not actually when people in my class are doing that. Actually, it's more when I see a painting that you can see that they painted around every little. Oh. Some people pull it off, though, especially those English. They just tend to be, they just tend to do things very intricately, but they do it well. So, hey, you know, anything can be done. Okay, here we go. Ultramarine blue and make a whole lot of it. I'm just laying it out there. If you can see my palette, I'm putting a whole lot. Look at that beautiful color too. Gosh. Gorgeous. A lot of water, a lot of paint. Throw it down. How fun is that?
better to have a little too much. See where I missed it up there. Must have kind of missed it up and around here. Somebody is not muted. That gives us a little more open time to play with these things. Just remember, you can you can always take out a cloud or something like that if you wanted to, but I would keep it sort of soft edge like this, personally. And just go around them. It's a lighter blue down here too. The sky gets a little bit lighter, a little bit. You are looking up into the sky. I think all of this I can just throw in a And that got too hard edged. I think I'll make it into another flower. <laughs> Otherwise I'm gonna have this funny shape in my sky. This one too, why did it too long? Is that gonna be okay? You know, if you want to put those wispy clouds in there too, you could just. I'm just thinking, you know, you don't want all these flowers here and then these clouds that are absolutely competing with them, you know. It's just gonna set you up for some problems. See now, this is all dry down here. So we can come back for our second go around on this stuff. So I don't want you to think dark values, I want you to think middle values. We just painted like the lightest value. Let's just think, think about some middle values. I'm not gonna get too dark. Let's see, a little more water than that. And you know, maybe it would be a good idea to lay, again, if it's, if it's not too wet, mine's pretty dry. I'm just gonna lay down water first. Not everywhere. If you lay down some water, you get some beautiful little areas where the paint just does its thing. Oops. 
try to not get any on. If you get any on the white, you know, you're going to have color go in there and you're going to have a hard time getting it off. Which I'm going to have that problem down here, but I don't really care about those ones too much. Just water first. Not a whole lot. I mean, I'm not, I'm not putting down tons of water here. I do want it to dry again for my darks. I just want to see a, a nice little sheen on there. It, it helps if you can just look at it from an angle. Let's see, sometimes if I turn off one light, they turn that one on, turn this one off. There we go. I can see. It's already drying up on me. <laughs> so time of year, it's probably this room. I, I, I got the sun just beating on my window. What are you using right now? What colors? Uh, the same colors I used before, but darker. So I'm going to use the Prussian blue, lemon yellow, and a little bit of cad red. Okay, thank you. And you might wonder why I don't use, why don't I just use lemon yellow and cad yellow? Because cad yellow also has cad red in it. You could try that too. Because I was thinking of a cooler green, that's why. That was my thinking. You know what else? My own. You might want to also try some um, some magenta instead of the cad red. Try a little magenta in there. It does get pretty dark down in these areas, but I don't want to get too dark. I was just going for those middle tones first. God, that color looks so much darker than when I'm putting it on. Going for the middle tones, not really the dark darks. Occasionally, I can hear maybe I want a few little highlights on some leaves. If it, if it gets a little too dense on you, just just take a little off. Remember, you have what's underneath. It's foolproof. Telling you. I used to say, I always thought it was foolproof, like F U L L. And then I read somewhere it was foolproof. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like foolproof. I don't, I never knew what that meant. It's one of those things where everybody says it, but I never thought about what it meant. It, it prevents oh. you from being a fool. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not the right choice in words, but. All right, some of those.
And even though some looks like maybe we have little halos around things, you know, where it gets really light like this or whatever, just not a problem. You know, we can we can always creep our values right up to it. My thing is, is I don't want to, I don't want you to get them <clears throat> this really dark, dark right up into it. We can do that at the end. In fact, we can hit some darks in there right now. One nice thing about doing them now is you'll get, you know, you'll get the color moving around a little bit more, a little bit more watercolorish. But we can always take that that dark right up into it. So then I would use just just the Prussian blue and maybe a little bit of um, magenta in there once in a while. So this would give you nice soft edges. And we can take that in and just cut it, cut it in around our flowers later. But for now, just see where your dominant, dominant darks are, the big ones. And we can hit other ones in there later. The dominant ones are around here. This is where I want most of my dark to be. And there are a few in here, but not, I don't want them competing too much with these. A little magenta in there once in a while works. Just breaks up your darks. So like I know there's darks back here that are reading as dark as these. What I would do is just put them a little bit darker back there. Not as dark as these. I'm just using the same colors with a little bit more water in them. Or a little less paint, one or the other. So it looks lighter. There's a couple of darks up in here, but not too many. If you want to hit a couple of stems coming out of your dark, you can just take your fingernail and do a couple of those little things. You know, you know most of it, the color around it will creep back into it, but you might have little, little, little areas. That's enough. Stop, Rob. Okay. I'm going to make the shadow color of these, of these poppies, which is a very light value. <clears throat> and I'm going to make it with ultramarine blue and a touch of um, magenta. So you're basically making a violet. If that gets too sweet of a color for you, then just gray it with a touch of yellow, which might look really good. There is a little yellow in the flowers. You know, the light hits the poppy here. I mean, the yellow, the orange part in it. Can you see where it reflects up into it? 
around it. Occasionally you'll see those, so might be kind of nice. You're better when you're doing these shadows to go too light than too dark. Dark's going to be hard to clean off. The, the A lighter value will be, you just add to it, you know? So why? See? I just put a value down there. It's it's too light for this. But that's fine. I mean, I can go right over that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold on. Just, I'm just going to spell out all my little values in there. Got the little orange center. And I'll just paint around that. Come around these. And there's some little shadowy things happening around the edges. And that's it. There's some value in there. It's a pretty light value. It's about a two value on the value scale. <clears throat> So, thing is, the nice thing about it is you can always go back over it, so there's no rush. But you know, it's watercolor, so it, it looks it usually looks better if you do rush. <laughs> I'll go slow. When I do my own watercolors, like this painting would be done in 10, 10 minutes. Maybe I might fart around with the details a little bit, you know, but I usually try to go really fast and just capture that fleeting moment. And I ruin a lot of them, you know, but usually when I'm out, when I'm out painting, the rhythm, of, the rhythm of it kind of goes like this. I'll, I'll go out and I'll do a couple of stinkers, you know? I'll do a couple of warm-ups and I just don't even care. I don't really care if they're really great or not. And sometimes they turn out great. Sometimes they're just not anything to write home about. <laughs> and then, and then after two or three, I get my rhythm going and that's when, woo. Almost always I, I get, you know, so in less than an hour, I've done two or three paintings, easy. And um, sometimes I'll do five in an hour, but that's when I really start finding my little groove. And <clears throat> Anne Lamott in her book, Bird by Bird, yeah. Which is, I mean, she's a writer, but it applies to, I think, any creative process. And she, I don't want to say the word that she uses. Well, I will. She says, you know, just get your shitty first draft out of the way. <gasps> what did you say? Oh, my. My word. I'm just joking. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's it. Oh, yeah. Get you just got. Yeah, you do. Absolutely correct on that. Because you're going to do, you're going to do some junky stuff, so just get it out. Otherwise, you know what happens? You're, you're, you're afraid and you start dancing around it and hours go by and then you get, you get a little pissed off because you haven't found your groove yet. You got to get through the, the nasty ones. Let me tell you what, every good painter I've ever met does those paintings that aren't so great. Hey, Rob, what Still. is the color you're using for your shadow, please? Ultramarine blue with a little bit of uh, magenta in it. That's all. And if it's too gray, if it's too, if it's too sweet of a color for you, like too lavender, maybe, then I would throw in a little bit of um, yellow into it. And that should, because it's a lavender, which is a, a, a diluted uh, violet, right? And violet and yellow, so I would use a little yellow in it. That would gray it a touch. But basically, I'm just using the lavender, ultramarine blue, and magenta. Now, what's happening in a few of these, like up in here, the light's actually coming through 
through the white. So it almost looks like a highlight, but it's what it is, the light's coming through it. So it's not as it's not as white as the highlight. It's not as white as this right here. It's actually coming through it up here. So much easier to see that in leaves because you'll you'll get the green glowing, you know, and but on a white, it's hard to see. And even if you didn't know that, you'd still do a good painting if you just get your values pretty good. You know what happens is over the years, I just studied these things. Probably used to paint them just fine and didn't even know. And then later on, just, like, oh, well, that's interesting. It just adds to your body of knowledge. You know, you, you do things for a while. You just pick up on things. If you pick up on, you just take these classes, you know, you pick up on one little thing a week, you know, in 52 weeks, you pick up on 52 things. It's a lot of things. Definitely enough to do some good watercolor. And I'm not being religiously um, loyal to the colors and values and shapes I'm seeing up here. I'm, but I'm, but I am hitting. I am, um, I am keeping track of them. Like I've got this little egg down here. I'm gonna put some of that up, to, up in there. I'm gonna leave some highlight down here. So I'll do that. But I'm not frantic about every little, well, you guys know me by now. I'm never that way anyway. It's a little bit dark. Ah, it's too dark. I might even keep my values this light. I mean, I'll, I'll sneak a couple little, very, very subtle darks, you know, relative to these shadows, the, the darkest part of the shadow. I'll sneak a couple of them in, probably in my feature. You just want them to look like these, like, paper or something. You know, the, I love this time of year. We get all these really interesting wildflowers. Have you guys seen the, the what they call it? It's called the devil's, ah, what's that stuff called? Devil's weed or something like that? Gyps gypsum weed? Gypsum flower? Big white one? Those are, remember like in the 70s, people tried to smoke those and they were, eat them or something and they, they died? That's a big white one. I see them around this time of year. They're pretty, they're beautiful. I wouldn't want to touch them. We've got some uh, pretty poisonous stuff. Are you thinking of Datura, the trumpet? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's Datura, yeah. Yeah. I think it's nicknamed, you know, gypsum weed or something like that. Yeah, lots of names. Yeah, <laughs> bad names. Yeesh. 
or those white oleanders, or not just the white ones. I mean, those oleanders are pretty lethal too. Yes, they're terrible. They'll make a, they can blind a person. Jeez. And the caster plant, those caster ones, they're supposed to be bad. I guess that's where they get the castor oil or something. I don't know. California is kind of like Australia in a way with all our poisonous snakes and plants. Probably not as bad as Australia, but we got some stuff that'll get you. I'm losing track of where I am. It's you know, if you can just think of. I should have done this in the beginning. If you can just think of I'll do it with this. Let's say we have a a flower and I'll just kind of with a little poppy thing in front of it. Do, 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 do. Something like that. Um, if, if you can think of it like a cup, like this. Mm -hmm. So the bottom is going to go into shadow mostly. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's got that ball on there. So the bottom part of that's probably going to go into shadow mostly. If you, if you can think of it like a cup. Now, underneath all of these, come on. That's mostly where you're going to get your shadow. Now, because it's so crackly, you'll get little little uh, little steps in there and whatever. But mostly the bottom's in shadow, and then this ball right here will go into sort of a shadow in it. Well, I'm wondering if just because I'm losing track of what's what's what, if I could do a if you know a very light, barely visible yeah. yellow dot where the dots are sure. losing what's you know where it, where is that top and where is the bottom <laughs> you mean to the flower or to the the centerpiece the well, little to, to a the bunch yolk. Of the mass to the mass over on the left and above yeah. the main flowers there are three that i call the main that are right in the middle yeah the ones that are off to the side i'm sort of losing where i am and i kind of want to put a dot so i know where the do it okay, i would do I'll it <laughs> yeah anything that you can use as a marker i think would work good i'm gonna go ahead and throw my yolks in there <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's a <laughs> Looks like the right term. I make work yeah. my, my mom just came down and, and she raises her own. She makes, she has all her own food. Oh my gosh. She, she's really into gardening and well, we've always had animals, but, but she has her own chickens and she feeds them. Uh, I mean, she, she's the kind of person that'll go out and and uh, you know, actually spend time with the animals. But yeah, she goes out and um, with a she she feeds them. I don't know what it is she feeds them, but it's pretty special and kind of expensive. So everybody in her area comes by and buys her eggs. She never, I mean, because they they love her eggs and. Uh, so she brought me down some this last time. She was down and they're so weird. They're so different than anything you have in our stores. I mean, they're all different colors and some of them are speckled. But there were some like kind of a like this color of an egg, almost a green, like light, a lighter green egg. And there's, uh, of course, dark brown and all these different shades of beige and brown. And, and I'm looking at them going, wow. And then I cracked one open and the yolk is just this dark, dark, deep orange. You never thought the yolk was supposed to be that color. 
goes, yeah, that's what happens when you feed them, right? And you raise them, right? Wow. How, how do they taste? Excellent. Very, you know, it's just more potent, you know, more potent than what you would normally expect. They're like, wow, that's, that's probably what eggs tasted like, you know, 100 years ago. And if you don't refrigerate them and you bake with them, yes. the bread, the cookies, everything is so much fluffier and better. That is interesting you say that. You know, she doesn't refrigerate her eggs. She says that, that what you do is, now this, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this before. This, this threw me. She says, you, well, you, you don't wash the eggs. I guess there's something in the bird that, that's I don't know, but she doesn't, she it's, never. She it's never called, the, you leave the bloom on the egg. Oh, okay, that's what she called it. Yeah, the, the bloom, that's right. You're right. So you, I'm not, I'm not delirious. You, that's what they do in Europe. They don't. Yeah. They leave the eggs on the counter. They never put them in the fridge. Oh, okay. If you buy eggs in England, they're just sitting on the counter there in the store. They're not refrigerated. Wow! Could you imagine? But but our country makes the growers wash them, and then once you wash it, you've got to refrigerate it because there's no more protection. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's what she said. She said, if you decide to wash them, then put them in the fridge. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they were so good. So I mean, every 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 you know, that's her thing. That's her way of um, showing her that she loves you. You know, she she comes and brings you. She has all these herbs in her herb garden. She's got this massive herb garden that's just crazy. How long do the eggs last on the counter with their normal bloom around the shell? I don't know. I, I could ask her. I, I don't really know. I ate mine right up. <laughs> I didn't give my neighbors. Chance. My neighbors have chickens here in Toluca Woods, and they leave them on the counter for weeks. Yeah. So yeah. they huh. they last as long as you leave the bloom on them. They That's still great. have salmonella on them, so you have to yeah, wash yeah. them. Yeah, and, and what about if there's poop on them? That's the sound. That's part, that's part of the bloom, huh? That's the bloom. Yeah. That's what you want to like. It's a nice word for poop. Yeah, oh. you want to make sure you don't. <laughs> huh? You don't put your hands in your eyes or fingers or in your mouth or something afterwards. So I'm not putting it in every single one of these little yoki things. Aren't these flowers called fried eggs? You, you, some people call them that. Right. I, I think they're called um, Matia Ha poppies. I might be saying it wrong, but I always think, aha. <laughs> we, we should have Hector give it a good Spanish accent. Oh, yeah. There you go. Matilla Ha. No, they're not. It's not a Spanish word. It's an Indian word. Oh. Oh. Um, from what I remember, my daughter got married at a Matillaha ranch, and that's the way they say it. And it's a. I think oh, so you say the L's? Okay. I th I just thought it was like tortilla, the way it's spelled, you know. So. <laughs> I know. So it's not. It's not uh, Spanish. I used to say it. Met Matihia. Hmm. <laughs> that was way wrong. <laughs> sounds good though. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. Now I'm going to come back and creep in some of these little shadows, the darker parts of the shadows, which is just the same color. You know what? What you can do too is if you keep a wet brush doesn't have anything on it and I, I don't even need much water really but let's just say for instance I wanted a little bit something darker in here I'm gonna get that a little bit darker but then it kind of gives me this hard line around it so then I just come back with my water and just kind of 
You dissipate that into the rest like that. You could come into your deeper parts, like there's something deep in there. And a couple of those, maybe down in here. And mine are a little bit on the blue side. I don't mind that, but if I want them a little bit grayer, just checked so I, I was sure I wasn't steering everybody wrong and it says that it was the name of a Shumash chief in Ventura County. Oh! Hey. Does it tell you how to pronounce it? Yeah, Matillaha. 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 Nice, okay. So, so it's a Native American name. Yeah. Oh. There are things like that, like like um, uh, Jacarandas, people want to say hakaranda, and, and oh. I believe, and I'll, I'll check this, um, that it comes from um, East Indian, the East Indian language. Um, oh. So jacaranda is, um, you pronounce the J. These are from my uh, plant species classes. Right. But, oh, that's nice. But probably in in Spanish speaking countries, if they're talking about it, they would say Ahacaranda just because of their language. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Did you take that class from the Arboretum? Uh, no, I years ago. I'm I'm a now I'm retired, but um, I did both architecture and landscape, and I. Oh plant materials courses that were taught at UCLA and they were wonderful. Wow. He, he took us, he no longer teaches it, but he took us to every corner of Southern California from San Diego to Ventura. Oh. And it was absolutely fabulous. It's the best class I've ever taken. That is so awesome. Hey, hey, hey be careful. Just oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just playing with you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, until I've and until I started taking Rob's class. <laughs> oh, okay, then that's better. It, it's a given. Your class is always the best class. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Almost got my my ego bruised. <laughs> I'm doing it that uh, Chinese way. See. Okay, now I've got to correct myself with this one. Jacaranda is from Tupi Guarani. I don't know where, what name that, what that is. Through Portuguese to, in the 18th century, Jacaranda. I thought it was from like Brazil or something. Well, yes, that may be it. Oh. Um. Tupi Guarani may be the indigenous Indian, uh, word in where is Guarani I think I've looked this up before I think it's like near Peru mm. South American more specifically Tupi Guarani origin you're right I was wrong <laughs> it's Brazil not India <laughs> <laughs> gotta watch me hey we won't, we, won't, we won't hold it against you. Big, big world. <laughs> I know, I was doing the same thing. But we, oh, we, we saw some geese in the Rose Bowl, but they didn't look like the Canada geese. They're red. And I, thought, I, I said, oh, I've never seen those here before. So I'm looking on my, on my thing for about a half an hour, trying to, on my phone, on our walk, <laughs> trying to find... My, my, my daughter said, you know, do you have to do that, Dad? <laughs> I said, sorry, it's just, you know, that was just our house growing up. You research everything, 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 no matter what it was. Everything was a research project. Did you find out what the birds were? No, I didn't. <laughs> I've never They're seen uh, the red geese. I, I was wondering if they were just... Huh. You know, they, they did not hang around with the other geese either. Uh-huh. 
So, but I just was wondering why they look different. And I never uh, actually found it when I, I think I forgot when I got home. But now you got me thinking about it again. Okay, I'm gonna quit class now. I got some research to do, everybody. <laughs> We had a dictionary in the in the dining room. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Oh, I know, huh? Right. I, I love all the inquisitiveness. <clears throat> I, I always learn something in this class. Thank you, Phoebe. You're welcome, anytime. You know, at the dinner table, we used to uh, read the newspaper. We, we choose an article. We just pass the newspaper around and and read out loud. My, because my, my mom used to say that that's what her dad did to her, and she is such an amazing speaker. Whoa. It's uh, pretty amazing sitting there listening to, listening to her give a talk. She's a psychologist. She can uh, really, her public speaking, well, just her speaking skills are amazing. So she was trying to, it didn't really work on me all that well, <laughs> but I tried. Probably made me a lot better than I would have been. Also really got us thinking about what's going on. Okay, now here's the other thing. I'm gonna take some of that blue, blue, gray, and where it's very light, see my brush, right? Kind of spread apart. You see all the little striations in there and whatever? Just, just do this. Here, I'll, I'll get up into that and show you. Oops, wrong one here. Uh, Zoom. So I'm, I'm just taking some of these little things over, see? Just, you don't have to do it exactly like it looks either. All I, what I'm doing is I'm just showing you the form. So this, this, the form of this is kind of coming out this way. Like that. You don't have to do it on every one either, just little little touches here and there. Because they do, they have just millions of little patterns to them. Very light. Here it goes, here and there. And, and you know, these are mostly for the feature ones. You know, especially back here, just a little bit of dry brushing. Very dry. Gives them that crinkled look. Now we can put some stems on there. It's 
So a lot of these same colors that we were using in here, the lemon yellow, the um, Prussian blue. Touch of cat. And I'm not really going to go for the darkest darks right away. Just give yourself a few little stems and things possibly coming out. Make, make sure some of your stems crisscross each other. See how they all, they're all crisscrossing each other. My leaf, when I do a leaf on there, I'm just going like this. There's a stem, I'm just going like this, like that. Just pull, push and pull, push and pull. Okay? It's the push and pull technique. On some of these little, just give them a little bit of shadow. You don't need very much, see? You, might, you, you probably, your brain sees thousands. Really, there's only like 12. Make sure some of your leaves overlap the flowers like this. So it tucks them in, kind of makes them feel like they're part of it. Occasionally, not everyone, but you get a few of that. In this case, a lot of these flowers sit deep down into the their stems and foliage and whatever, so. We'll pull some over, not so much up in here, not on our features so much, but definitely over on these guys, I can hit a, definitely hit a few right over the tops. Make, make sure they're crisscrossing you. You don't want them all beside each other. You don't want them all beside themselves. <laughs> no. Seriously, folks. Just, it's all you need, just a little bit. This one is just sitting there and needs a few. A few things just to kind of nestle it in. They got some interesting flowers too. They, I mean, leaves. They just kind of do a lot of that stuff. Occasionally, like I pulled that right over the yoke. Occasionally, you want to do a couple of those because it looks more natural. You know, if you if you avoid every little thing in here, it looks. Synthetic? No. Man-made? Too perfect. Just breaks it up a little bit. Them down into the dark stuff. You see how that starts to nestle everything in and makes it feel more. Oh, 
part of nature. I'm just going to leave that kind of blue gray back there. You see these little darks that we're hitting in here now, that, that brings all this forward, makes that recede. So like even right down here, I think I'll hit a couple of dark things just to bring that forward. I can really give myself a, nice, a couple of really nice dark ones in here now. I just love how blue the greens get in there. So I'm adding kind of a blue gray green. So I'm adding a little bit of magenta to my green mixture of the um, Prussian and lemon, and I'm adding a little bit of the uh, magenta. about that one. Nice and dark. Let's stage it a little bit with some more darks. Prussian blue with magenta. And if you like, what you can do is really kind of carve carve into the flower like that and really if you want that papery feeling it's it's you know maybe not everywhere but you get you'll get that uh real delicate edge if you take a nice dark into it You could even spread your brush the way you did with the, in the flower. Sure. Could you? Or maybe I'm being too fussy. Um, you mean on the outside? Take your brush loaded with the dark color and spread the, yeah. Yeah. And then go around the outside, you mean? Or? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of contouring this. But if you want that delicate uh, edge, yes. that sort of uh, crisp edge like that, you can do it that way. Um, I'll try it and then you can see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can just make it up. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly like what's there. Uh, but you see that that dark really pops it. That's where you get the, the real crackly edges. So if it's too round like this one is, I'm just going to come into it and give it a couple little little divvies in there. You could just leave it like that, like a line around the outside. It really just kind of comes down to what, what your own preference is. I put a little bit of shadow on that edge because it was standing out too much. And you could take the sky color, come back into some of these edges. I 
I kind of like that one. <laughs> it was an accident. And as you can see, you can play with these edges for as long as you like. Just some dark things, a little abstraction down there. There's so much abstraction. Just go down here really begs a lot of attention, but you know I'm just gonna leave it because I like the I like the way it's done. <laughs> I was meaning for it to not have not um, pull so much attention, but it's fun. And this is the part that could take a while and then you might want to just take your time on this is the staging part and the you know typically at the end of the painting i'm working on edges and i'm any sort of detail anything that and the reason why i do that is because i don't know because I'm kind of telling the story at the end I'm, or finishing the story, let's say. And like, what did I want to say about this? And so then I'll, I'll push things and pull things and um, Sometimes I call it dial it in. You got to get all the stuff out there before you can dial it in. You know, occasionally they get these little like a slice in between the two petals. I like to hit that once in a while. Divvy it up like in there. Just find a couple of areas where it might look good. So that's 11.30. What a beautiful day. I got a little sunburn on my neck yesterday. I haven't had a sunburn in a long time. Not, it turned brown though, which is, I must've had a little bit of a base. Where were you walking? I've been walking around the Rose Bowl quite a bit. I did a double yesterday, so it takes a while. You know, you're out there for, I definitely should have put on some sunscreen. <laughs> it's time to do it. 
see this right here? See how I have a, an alignment right here where these two are in alignment to each other? That's the kind of thing I look out for. I mean, I, th I guess in the actual one, I, I forgot to include that one back there, but, you know, it's no big deal. What, what I can do is just, just uh, come in with a little bit of background here and, and kind of, let's say, shape this one where it comes out. And just, just break up that line, that's all. So look, look for things like alignments and things like that. When I do flowers or any kind of vegetation, they, they just, they're just bound to happen. Okay, let's see, let me reset all my settings here. What did I take? off my HD. And please start sending your things in. Got a bunch of them. There's Claire. Is that the one? You sent me two. I did. I sent you two. Okay. I think this is the later one. Uh-huh. There we go. All right. I like. Now you went with the warmer. Did you, Rob, did you change your HD? Yes, I did. Thank you. Change the HD and it changed my resolution. Thank you for for saying something. Always helps because you know, who knows what goes on in my head. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know why I always forget everything. <laughs> Probably thinking about too many things at once. Okay. Nice. So your values are looking great. Your values for the flowers. See how you went with that light shadow. That was a good move. And you went with a warmer color and it could be the picture itself, your camera or whatever, but so it's it a warmer color. It, it's, it looks pretty true to my colors. I mean, it just goes to show you that you, we, we could have gone with a warmer color shadow and that would have worked. So, I mean, because it works, so nice. And you know, occasionally what I would do is take a little bit of shadow and pull it over the yolky part. Because all, all your yolks are kind of oh uh, yeah just just a couple of them you know yeah and and that that could help um, a couple leafy you can't really see any leafy edges they're only going to show up over over the poppy so now your sky is pretty light and the reason I say that is because uh, one thing about you know these matea hot poppies get uh, Matilla hot poppies. Uh, they get they get pretty high up. They're like ten feet high sometimes, and so oftentimes people take pictures and there's this dark blue sky because they're down low looking up at them, and that's what that's why they silhouette up against the sky so nice. So I might think about taking a little darker blue. Just go over this, the blue you have, and just. Okay. And that, that'll get them to really pop up against that sky. Okay. And then I also might work with, let's see, the 
contour. This contour right here. Okay. I might just flatten that out a little bit. Just just a little bit here and there. So it has some ins and outs. Okay. And, you know, it's just um, a little here and there. It looks a little, you know, it looks a little one, two, three, that's all. All right. That's all I can think. Any questions? Um, no, I mean, it's, it is, it is a challenge to do, to feel the flowers because they're all so chaotic. You yeah. Know, and it, you know, my instinct is to make things that are regular. <laughs> yeah. Doing chaotic things just is very hard. Well, we need more practice then. Yes, more practice. Practice, practice. But it was good. Yes. So you good. see what happens when they go around with something a little darker? They really stand out more? Yeah. That's all. That's all I was saying. I see. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank you. All right. And Ethel. Ethel usually sends more than one. Let's see. Only one. Ethel. Only one. Only one. Okay. All right. Edges, my only edges, problem, edges. my only, yeah. my, my my main problem was the, I think the ones on the top came up were a little too big, but I guess that doesn't. I was trying to make them disappear, sort of. Yeah, you could pull some foliage over them and some leaves, and yeah, that kind of makes them feel further away. I kept trying that, but <laughs> maybe I'll work on it some more. <laughs> I'll cut yeah, and die more. Yeah, the uh, the darks around them look pretty good. What, what do you think about bringing a couple of around up here, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it needs more dark in a few spots, but I got a little chicken after a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, see, that's something you can always ease yourself into. Is it's not really a a dark isn't something you have to hit right away. Yeah. I like the shapes of your flowers, those three in the yeah. middle, the shapes of them, it's beautiful. Thank you. I, I, didn't, I didn't like the picture where they were kind of clumped, it's one big clump, so I kind of separated them a little. Yeah, I like this one's inventive, you know, about, yeah. you pulled that's that one right over the top there. Yeah, well, when I, when I did the color study, that's what came out, and I thought, oh, I like that, so I kept it. <laughs> now, since this sort of acts like an awning, do you think it would be casting a shadow down to here? There should be more shadow, yeah. I, got so. I might yeah. bring some of that shadow in. You know, there just certainly could be light hitting right there. So, you know, it's just a thought, maybe something. Yeah. Something like that. That's true. Again, I got a little chicken, so. <laughs> and then, so if these are coming off too, I might hit a little bit of shadow. And these are way too dark, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I wasn't, I, I, I think I kind of missed where the light was coming from and I had it coming from the right. It's kind of coming, I think it's coming from there. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. It might be more over, but I think it's something like that. Yeah, okay. So, but you know, these aren't mistakes. These are just, you know, ideas to add if you want to add a few things. Yeah. Punch a couple little darks in there. See how yeah. you like them. I think I need to let it sit for a minute and then go back. Yeah. And then, you know, if, if you want to go around with some background too, not that dark, but that blue I used on. Yeah, I had a, a real problem when I put the sky in just kind of didn't do what I wanted it to do, but. You know, some, sometimes if I'm gonna do something like this, I'll just do the whole sky over. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let it completely dry and then go do the whole sky over. Then I usually get what I want. But if I just try to do patches, you know. Yeah, I didn't wanna. Yeah, it's, it's not very hard. 
Yeah. Especially with your underpainting already there, it's a lot easier. Oh, so. good. <laughs> Maybe I'll try that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ethel. Right. Thank you. It was good. You're welcome. And Gina. Oh, boy. Smorgasbord. Oh, hey. fun. Fun, fun. That was really fun. Yeah, I was going to say. It's, this is kind of a Gina subject. I mean, this is really good subject to do. Did you palette knife a lot of this? Almost all of it, except some of the sky. I came back to just change it. It was a little too busy. But look how the, the palette knife really, really lends itself to this very well. Yeah, these edges, these crinkly edges. It was yeah. just the right thing. Crinkly edges. Word of the day, crinkly. Because uh, it is. Yeah, I love the way you're just taking things over. A lot of color, too. A lot of color in your shadow as well. A lot of yellow, greener the, blue. The white I used all had a tiny bit of yellow in it to make it a little. Yeah. Yeah, then that, that might be another thing for everybody. Um, you know, usually I put a little bit of yellow in my whites. That might be a good one, idea. Very little, a little bit. more, I think. Especially on edges. Yeah, these are, look at the lights here. Even in your lights, you're getting some pink and some very light blue green. Yeah, you get a lot of, a lot of color. Lights in the lights and shadows. Oh, yeah. And look how the darks really work for her. Look, and then look how she went a little bit bluer with the one in the background. Nice. The, the, the dark is really working for you. Oh, yeah. So there's a great way to handle darks. Nothing to say here. See how, see how that dark blue really sets her flowers off? I mean, it's not a dark blue. It's just darker than the flowers. Okay. Thank great, you. great clinic on edges there. Thank you. Really fun subject. Good. Well, good. Hey, if anybody can think of other things, I love our native stuff around here, but I mean, you know, anything that, any subjects, just run them by me. You can always email me. Ooh, is this the hot press paper, Cynthia? Yeah. You got hooked on it, huh? <laughs> it's the first time I tried it, actually. I didn't do it last week. Oh, okay. The good subject matter for it. Maybe I should. Yeah. Have done. I always feel like I have to warn you guys that I'm taking. Do you think I should just just spontaneously grab like mineral paper or sometime and just do it, or do you think I should give you a couple of weeks to advance notice so you can get your own? Well, I'd like to get some of my own to try it out when you're doing it too. Well, why don't why don't we all get some uh, some mineral paper? Maybe a sheet. I don't know if you can buy a sheet. And maybe we'll try it out in a couple of weeks. That'll give you a little time. Okay. Uh, yeah, really nice values. I could even see some darker areas in the shadows. Let's see. I mean, I don't have... But in some of the, like, in between things, I might hit something a little bit darker. That's way too dark, but... Like, well, you get some overlap. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, right under things, it'll cast a little bit of a shadow onto the hair. Usually, you get something a little darker, possibly in here or some of those areas. So, let's see here. What else? And I, I think we could with the uh, sky, again, just silhouetting some of these flowers up against that dark sky. Not really dark, probably not this dark, but just kind of. Okay. Should pop those really good. And 
or you get some good shadows on your and what will happen too is that you'll get some shadow cast by the, the yoke part so you got the shadow on the yoke now a little bit of cast shadow yeah. from the yoke yep. a little bit doesn't take much just a little bit if you do I'm like like mine are starting to look like they're floating so because I can't get I don't have a small enough one so just you don't need very much in there just a little bit and they'll stop looking like dots and they'll start looking like balls casting a shadow okay um and then it all looks good to me uh, any, any way you want to treat the edges is fine with me just remember I I would occasionally look look for the little splits in between yeah. the petals. Yeah. Occasionally look for them. I I I didn't see very many, but they'll be in there once in a while. So you might want to throw a couple of those in there. They just add. Break it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Henry. All right. Hi, Rob. I'm back to hey, the basket today. Great, great, great subject. Ooh, nice color in the shadow. So she's got blue in there, violet. Yeah, you even threw in some of those yellows. In this. Yeah, those are nice. Thank you. Start getting some nice darks in there, too. Can you those? Henry. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. It is really. And nice, look Look at his groupings, everybody. So so he's got the uh, the main grouping right here and sort of a supporting uh, focal point over here, but it's not detracting from this at all. Same here. It's got a little, little one down in the shadows, but still not detracting. And then these up against the sky. I mean, the only thing I could probably suggest on this is maybe a darker sky, but I don't know if you really need it. It's working already. Yeah, the photograph is uh, overexposed. The, the oh, actual opinion yeah. looks, uh, the, if you see my uh, picture here on my table, did I start the video? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see. see. Maybe a little darker in the, see the different light. I have to put it on the, uh, there it is, I see it. Yeah. Oh, you did your own? Oh, okay. No. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they pop a little bit more, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. The, I should that's why they call them poppies. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, that's... Besides that, I think you're looking really good. Really good. Thanks. I don't even think you need that, really. Yeah, that... Uh, the. The green in the sky was a happy accident. My brush just oh yeah touched the, the paper, but on top of the the flower, you know, there's a, yeah the big stains. There's a accident. I my brush, you know, I hold the uh, two brushes in one hand. Yeah, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> Not so. Uh, <laughs> I was giving you know sometimes I I'm getting to the point now where I'm accidentally doing it. Yeah, it, it comes. You do it for a while and it just starts coming naturally. I'm right. really thinking about it. So when I was working on the corner, uh, my top brush touched the, the paper. I didn't realize that. That's what happened. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. But I like Sometimes it. Sometimes it's the I, best I didn't clean that up. I, I just kept it. So the, the flower kind of uh, uh, and the clouds mixed up. I, I love doing that. Just just something happens and you just let it yeah. let it be. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it just turns out so good. Yeah, that makes the painting unique. Yeah. It makes life interesting. <laughs> Spontaneity, you know? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And Suzanne. Hey, you went vertical with it. How about that? They look like pansies. <laughs> I like your buds. Look at these buds in the foreground. You give them some 
he really gave him some form. You're, you're, you know, you're really getting, you're really getting quite. You can tell that form is something that means a lot to you. So you have the, you know, you have the ball and the light on the top and the shadow being cast by it. And even, I'm even seeing a little bit of the yellow in the shadow. You're getting some good form out of these buds here, really. Did you take a little touch of white in there? Uh, for the stem. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I forgot. I probably should have thrown a little bit of white in there, too. You know what else works, too, is just, just like lemon yellow itself because it's so opaque by itself. It can also, some colors, too. Also, by the way, a uh, cad red. I mean, we wouldn't use it in this one, but sometimes it's so opaque that you can use it almost just like gouache. The cadmium colors seem to be very opaque. So anyway, uh, I mean, you're getting some good value. See, your, your sky is plenty dark enough to get your silhouetting of your, your poppies up against them very nice. I'd say the only thing maybe, see how you handle this edge right here? Uh-huh. I really like that edge. I would maybe, you see how round this one is? Uh, right. I might play with that edge a little bit. Okay. You know, and, and it could mean that you might want to take some of this color in the background up a little higher. And I, and I, I certainly wouldn't go like this with it. Right. Because it's just going to echo this, right? Uh -huh. So I might do, you know, something a little bit different. But so you get a little bit of a little something in the background to kind of have, um, so it just doesn't look like it's outlined. And then, okay. And then, you know, maybe come back in and out of that edge a little bit. Okay. Would, see what you like. Yeah, anytime an edge gets too, too regular. Mm -hmm. That's about it, though. Maybe that one. Just play with the edges a little bit, see what you think. Okay. That's it. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And? Hi. Oh, right. Hi. Now yours are really standing out because you got plenty dark enough. And look at all that. Look at all that wet into wet you got going in the background. Wow. With plenty dark. Good. And value. I felt like I should have more, more flowers in, in the front. They're too separated down in the front. I don't know. I like my three in the middle, but the others in the front. You have a little, yeah, you have a little overlapping here and a little overlapping yeah. there. And I like how this one. One, two, three, kind of leads you in. And then you have your focal point. This one kind of leads you out, but then there's a shadow there from blocking you going out. So you come back in. Um, I would think about some more shading. Okay. Uh, in the flowers. Like uh -huh. maybe in here a little bit more. Some shading on the yoke. Okay. A little on the yoke itself. And if there's anything cast by it, like this one, maybe something a little bit underneath. If you want this down in, you know, down in there, maybe a little bit more shadow on it. If you want it to feel like it's more down underneath. Uh-huh. Like it could very well be that, that this flower is casting a shadow onto that. That's something to think about. Okay. It's more shadows. And you know what it is? It's, it's basically just a few more little shadows to work on. And then um, whatever you want to do with your edges. They are really sharp. A lot of your edges are really sharp. And they are. I mean, you want, you want a lot of that. But to calm down some of them, well, you, here's what I did on mine. Uh, I just took a little touch of shadow around a few edges. And this is too dark. I wish I had the right color. I wish I had this this color and value right there. 
Yeah, I'll try some really, I have this lavender, it's probably too much, but just something a little bit lighter. What happens is they curl under occasionally right on the edge and then you'll get a little bit of shading. So that'll help to, so, so it's not too cut out looking. Okay. Just fuse, fuse the edges a little bit more, a little bit more shadow. And then, you know, you don't want to do it everywhere because you want some nicely, some nice ones all kind of cut out looking. So just, just here and there, a few little subtle shadows and, and then think about your edges. I, I love this one. I love what you did with that edge. As if, <laughs> as if a, this one's curling down this way and this one's sort of coming at us. It makes it feel like this is coming at us and this one's kind of curling down. So happy, happy accidents, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, just remember that the thing is, is that you decided to keep it, which means that you, you did it, right? Oh, thank you. That's a good yeah. way to think. <laughs> it is. The, the happy accidents aren't happy accidents if you get rid of them. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, that is the thing. If you decide to leave the happy accident, then it's yours. But if, when you take it out, then it's gone forever. <laughs> okay. All right, Louisa. Hi. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's see. Okay, and so mainly our light is coming from here. So then I would think of th things that look like they're leaning off to the right are probably going to catch a little bit more shadow, you know, like this. Yeah, you got some shadow down there. That's good. Um, and then think about if you've got this big sort of flat saucer right here, it might be casting a shadow up onto these. So it'll kind of make it feel like these are below it. Right. And you can do the same, like this one right here is casting a shadow onto these, etc. Mm -hmm. So th those can all help with the feeling of overlapping. And so see how you pulled some of the, the weeds or the, uh, the leaves over? Yeah. I'd, I'd hit a few more of those, even a little bit darker. Oh, okay. And then again, with a, a little bit more shadow, this feels okay. A couple of those underneath. It all helps to kind of nestle things and tuck things in. Mm -hmm. Same with these, a little bit darker at the base. Obviously not that dark, but. Mm -hmm. And then remember, you see how these are all beside each other? These? I was trying to make them crisscross, but I guess yeah, not. I I can see you're doing that down here. So just just occasionally, you want one or two di one or two little diagonals will do it. That's all I need. Like right. here, you did you did it right there. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, in terms yeah. of the composition one thing compared to yours and especially compared to Henry, I really like Henry's is that yeah. uh, my center is not big enough compared to the rest. I, I could have made it more forward and also connected to the next bunch to the left of it. Sure. Yeah. You know, so it's cascading down to the left. Yeah. yeah. Instead of separating that, I could have made it more together or overlapping somehow and more upfront compared to the rest. Because right now it's almost, it's not equal, but it's too, it's not prominent enough. Yeah. So if you, um, You could use white, but it's well, one of those paintings where I, I might, I, if I were going to do that, I'd probably just do another one. 
Oh yeah, no, I want to do another one. This is the darkest part is there. And yeah, no, no, I would do another one. I love the topic, by the way, this was great. And I love these flowers. So, um, they're great. Yeah. And I tried to work on the edges. I like the edges of these flowers and I did not succeed everywhere. So it, it's something that I need to practice more, but it's a great. Well, now that's something you can still like right here. So it's working right there. Yeah. That one. So it's because you used a wet, a wet color and a dark color. So get, get something wet and dark and put it back there. Right. And just like you did up here. Mm -hmm. And you'll get what you want. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Diane. Okay. Yeah, that's a very nice meandering composition. You see how she overlapped things? Um, oh, hi, Rob. Hi. So see the overlapping here? The overlapping here and there. I, I didn't, I, I didn't have time to like really finesse the edges on those those um those poppies yeah the ones that are yeah. especially are highlight poppies i guess this is this is really great right here oh that's 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 the edge oh, okay Thanks. see see how it's 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 tight but it's kind of crumbly too whereas this is just yeah um, that's too almost straight. cut out I, yeah i need to go in and fix those yeah a little bit of a little bit of edge work in there. Okay. I mean, yeah, you're at, you're definitely at that point where it's mostly edges. And like I said, um, some darks around your focal point. If you wanted to get any darker, that might be fine. Okay, sure. And you know, by the way, um, Suzanne hit a couple of nice dark, uh, nice, nice little whites in there. So occasionally you'll get something catching a little bit of light once in a while. Okay. Yeah. So if if you want to use a little white, I I didn't even think of it. Because that that sometimes what I'll do is I'll hit them white and just let them dry and then come back with the the green color around here and just glaze it over, and they okay. look like they look like and they look they look so you really have to get in to look at them to whether you could even tell whether there anyone even used any white. So oh, it's a great okay. way to get away, some light in there. Yeah. Besides that, I think we're looking pretty good. Uh, occasionally, you know, and I didn't get to this either. I, I kind of forgot. Uh -huh. But a little bit of yes. yellow up in the shadows. Yeah. Yes. That that Might bounce work. light. Yeah. That would be Yeah, the nice. bounce light. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would have liked to. I think I'll sneak a little bit in, in there after class. Okay. So... All right. Well, this was fun. Thank you very much. Oh, thank much. you. It was a good subject of practice. Thank you. You're welcome. It's one of my favorites. This time of year. You know, it's seasonal, right? Hey. hey, hey. Sorry, I, didn't, I didn't do the one with the sky. I did the close one. You did the close one. Nice. Uh, now, what, what, what kind of paper are you working on? Uh, it's just, you know, cold press. Cold press, because you're getting some, some uh, little puddly edges, which are nice. You know, you've always had this too in all your paintings too, but you have this wonderful rhythm, rhythmic kind of flow. And I'll, see, look at the look at the rhythm she gets out of this, everyone. See that? That comes with a lot of drawing and, and thinking about it and embracing the idea. That you've got a lot of rhythm in this piece. You know, I love that. I mean it, it Rhythm on organic things. Anything organic, when you push rhythm, a little more rhythm into it, you know, it's the human getting involved. Maybe they're not that rhythmic, but you, you want to push, you see it in there and you want to push the idea. It's a, it's a, it's a great idea, you know, you're pushing your own abstraction into it. 
and I think it works very nicely. That was a, it was um, so complicated. I was trying to figure out a way to keep all that busyness without having it overwhelm the flowers, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like, it feels busy, but it doesn't overwhelm the flowers, you yeah. um, know? I mean, you know, I, I guess the only thing I could think of to say is maybe some darks. Mm -hmm. That's all up to you. Uh, I, I could see you stopping here and it being a very nice piece. Occasionally, what I'll do is I'll rhythmically lace a sort of a dark meandering through the piece, sort of linking things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be good. So, so just think of it like, like that, you know, sort of a linking type of thing. Okay. That's that's about all I can think of. I mean, you know, let, let's say even though this is the biggest one, maybe it's not the one you want to talk about the most. Maybe this is the one that you, that you want to make your theme flowers. So, you know, that's where I would, that's usually where I want my most contrast. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh. Okay, here we go. Uh, Marie. Now that pops. Those poppies pop. Oh, good. Uh, Popping poppies. Oh, and I really love this light leaf down here. You made a, what a great move. No, oh, thanks. That's a great move. Darn it, I wish I would have thought of that. Well, you know, you were talking about painting around all the stems and all that while I was doing it. And I was thinking, yeah. oh, stop it, Marie, stop it. So, yeah. I, painted around that leaf and then I did some stems and then I thought, no, it's just. They work. Yeah. A little messy in there, but oh well. So you see how she went around a lot of these, you know, not actually very many, maybe like six or seven little stems, but with some dark around the, this, look at this. She even looked like, it looks like this flower is actually casting a little bit of a shadow Mm, yeah. onto what's below it. I mean, I would suggest possibly doing that here, maybe the, maybe a little bit more there, maybe yeah. even here. Yeah, okay. I like that. That's good. I mean, so you don't lose the value. I mean, you still see it, but um, it feels like it's underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a, just a quick swipe of a glaze and just... Right. just no problem. Good and I can see the same thing like the, the this poppies over this poppy. I could see maybe a little bit. Yeah. I, it was hard because I kind of, um, looking at the photo, Yeah, I wanted to distinguish those three from each other, and I thought it was hard to do. So I did put some shadows in that weren't there before, but like there. Yeah. But, this is a great one. This yeah. is a great one right there. But I didn't want to overdo all the. Lines. Yeah, so then let's just yeah. leave it. Well, but, a little bit more, just that one place or someplace. And, yeah. yeah. And then I, I think of things like this that, that are high contrast and have a sharp edges. Um, you might want to think about maybe softening these edges just a little bit with a, with the same, just a, just a touch of a glaze around the edges yeah. that, that will take off the take off the edge, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it just soften the edge a little bit. So it, it doesn't it, um, pop so much. Right. And you can still maintain the dark. Yeah. Um, wow. Beautiful piece. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see some just shading on things like underneath yeah. there. Okay. You. Okay. Great. All right. You. You're welcome. Thank you. And let's go. Hey. Ooh. Look at that. Ooh, it's still wet. <laughs> it's it's a it's a min mineral paper. So everybody see this is the look of mineral paper. Look look at that. <laughs> look at all those puddles. So it's a little slower, right? Right. Did you say mineral paper or did you say yeah. it's a mineral paper? Yeah, it's called mineral paper. It's weird. It's not, I mean, you think it's UPO paper, 
which is that plastic, but it's, it's actually mineral paper. Weird stuff. You said it's made from minerals, right? Yes, it's uh, like stones and stuff. Wow, that, that's weird. How, how do you make paper out of stones and stuff? Very carefully. Okay, so um, I wouldn't go, I mean, your, your shadows, I would definitely not go any darker with your shadows on, on the poppies. What I, uh -huh. might, what I might do, though, is, and you're doing it back here. Yes. With, with some of those, a little bit, a little dark. Darker? A little darker in, uh -huh. in, in select areas. Yes. Just to get things to jump out a little bit more, that's all. Mm -hmm. Like right here, it's working very nicely. Right. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit more of that action, you know. Uh, occasionally, here and there. That's about it. I mean, everything else I think is looking great. Um, you know, that also the nice thing about the U, the, the UPO, the, the mural, you can actually wipe out, right? Yes. So if you wanted one of those light stems, you could actually wipe this out and uh, then come back around it. Let's say, like wipe it out and then come back around it with something in the background and just, just mostly talking to the people who have never used this before. And, you know, by the way, just because, like, if, if I'm going to demonstrate on, on the uh, mineral paper for the whole class, um, then it, it doesn't mean that you have to use the mineral paper. It's just, just a suggestion for when I do it. Okay. That's about it. I, um, I think uh, the one uh, on in the background, yeah. One is, I just found out it's a dead center. This one? But the picture is, I think it's a dead center too. It's kind of funny. It should be a little bit to the right. Isn't that one? Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that like a two center? It doesn't really, you know, if you put all this dark around it. Yeah. Then I, I think it would really. It's funny though. It's two center. Well, you can always wipe it out. <laughs> On the other hand, I mean, it, I have to say for me, it, it doesn't bother me. Oh, yes. So, okay. Just so you know, I mean, I'm not, uh, I mean, like dead center would be here. Mm -hmm. And I know it is centered, but um, right. it seems to be okay. Maybe I would put um, more petals on the right side so that the shape will change. Sure. The, kind of crosswise. <laughs> yeah, or maybe another one here or something, or maybe, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. But see how you hit the dark one, the, the dark little blue around the edges there? Mm -hmm. It made this one pop. I wouldn't do that around here. Uh. Yeah. And you notice what I did here? I, I put a little bit of value over there because, um, let's see. Clear. That's no. you. You did, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. You, you think about maybe you see how your your um, your flowers do this, mm -hmm. and then the background does this too. Mm -hmm. So what I might do is actually just just tip that up a little bit here. No big deal. Oh. But it, it just kind of counters. It counters this this going down here at this angle. It just yes. counters it a little bit. Oh, okay. Thank. Uh, yes. Thank you. It is small, but I mean, it, and it does work the way it is. So that, that's what I was thinking on mine. So, okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So much. You're welcome. Ooh. Why do I love this area right here? Hi, Rob. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at you with the darks. Kaboom with the darks today. Yeah, I like those those color combinations. That was fun. Yeah, you got you got a rainbow of color going in there. And look at the um, look at the rhythm of see how our composition travels. Brave, meandering composition. A lot of rhythm. 
Bought a rhythm. Yeah, and you shocking stark uh, values in the middle, which I don't usually see from you. Yeah. I like that, though. Oh, good. And yeah, this is usually what I see from you. Mm -hmm. Really light, light. I like them both. I mean, I, I, <clears throat> so, right, you got some nice light values on here. Uh, I don't know. How, how Are you having any issues with it? No. Um, you know, it's um, fun and uh, like I just tried to liven it with the different colors, yeah. you know, giving sparking little areas and the flower delineation obviously <laughs> kind of <laughs> did not <laughs> come across. <laughs> I, I didn't draw with pencil, with brush, yeah. and it was the same brush I used throughout, um, which uh, really I usually like to have a fine line to actually yeah. delineate, say, the flower petals and so forth. So it's a little messy, but. Now, this just goes for anyone else. If you happen to get an area that you, that you think is a little bit messy, that you would like a little bit more delineated, you certainly could do that with your brush and come in and, and um, mess with some edges and get some delineation. Or you could come in with a Sharpie I mean, this is a, maybe a little too thick of a line, but <laughs> but a lot of people like to draw back into areas um, and and delineate them with the with a pen and ink. So that that's fun. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't do it on this piece, but uh, I would, you know, that that's something I'll do in a in a piece, you know, in some other pieces. Uh, by the way, I uh, I noticed. You put, did you put this blue on over your sky later? I did, I did. Nice. So there's a good way, you see, it doesn't mean your sky is done. I mean, she came in later with this and, and to get this stuff to pop a little bit more, she came in with something a little bit darker. Yeah, you could, I could see you doing, oh, well, you don't want to ruin this beautiful thing in there, but yeah, I like the way you did that. It's the funny thing is you have such a, organic edge right there. It just looks like naturally just flows right into the piece. Yeah, I felt like that corner, it needed a little, as you say, staging. Um, yeah. So then I came back in and yeah, I just, it's kind of just, um, you know, extremely loose and not delineated. I mean, it just went in that direction. So I just took it there, you know, like that's what this will be and see, you know, to see if I can make that work. <clears throat> yep. Sometimes that's harder to do. <laughs> <That's Yeah. me. laughs> well, it's a nice, loose, poetic way. You know, you were talking about delineation. You know, I don't think you need as much when we're doing fine art. You know, if this were a botanical illustration or something like that, I might. But even a lot of illustrators are pretty darn loose. So I think this is telling the story very nicely. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. And by the way, illustration is storytelling. Yeah. You know, artists have been illustrators forever. And, and also poets, you know? When I say poets, I just mean, you know, bringing across more of a feeling than rather a accurate depiction. You can do both. You can do just one. All right, wow. This has got some, well, and you've got some nice color in your darks. Look at the blues and the reds in these darks. They're lively darks. And you came in with the split in between the petals. I see you did that. And by the way, everybody, if you look, um, notice how, for instance, this one right here. Notice how it, it, you're looking across, you're looking across it. 
Whereas these ones right here, you're looking more down. Like almost, it's it's facing you. So it's it's nice to have. I do it with leaves too all the time, but flower petals absolutely. And you need some that are feeling like they're they're even facing away from you. You know, you just need you need them facing different directions to look natural. And this does. All right. A lot of pop in your interest areas. A lot of hard edges. So if you want to soften any here and there, I'd probably a couple out here, keep them tight in here. I might throw some more shadow on this one. Okay. A little, little bit darker. And then, um, you know, these are so light that even if you have hard edges, it really doesn't, it, there's not enough contrast to matter. So if you decide to come back and, and pop the sky around these, okay. then I'd be, I'd be conscious of making the edges too hard. Okay. Like mine are, mine look like they were just cut out. <laughs> okay. And yeah, yeah you, did, you did pull some uh, stuff over your... I was going to say maybe a little bit more, but I think it's fine. Yeah. I was going to say pulling a few little. And one thing you're doing really nicely here is you just have this big field of color with a couple little interruptions in there. And then, it, and then with a couple little leaves, you tell the story and you're out of there. I love that. Minimal. Waterco is all about minimal. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. And um, hey, George, a lot of color in this piece. And this is a good example of how you can use colors that might, you know, like he's got blues and reds that are pretty saturated, but the value is dark enough to where they they silhouette up against it very nicely. You get in the pop. Look at this. What? What are you? What's going on with you in the sky? That's amazing. <laughs> well, it started as a turquoise blue sky. Yeah. Then I, then I put an opera wash on it. Yeah. And then I decided to put a, a light ye cad yellow wash on it. Because it looks like a. You know, like like an aurora or something back there, or something. something. Looks like Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I'd say the only thing maybe is if see how a lot of your edges are really really sharp. So what I might do is just with a very light shadow value, like something that you're using up in here. Um, hit it on a few of your edges, so, you know, where, where they're really, really sharp. And that'll soften the contrast. Uh-huh. Because it's the contrast that makes it look, look so sharp. Yeah. See, over here you have fairly sharp edges, but the background's so light around it, it doesn't really compete. Yeah. So here, it just looks really razor sharp. And so, so you just take some of this color just go around a couple of your edges. They feel like they're bending. Oh, they feel like they're okay. bending downward. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Something like that, maybe, maybe, possibly, maybe, maybe these are casting a little bit of a shadow onto this. Yeah. Very light. And I do that, you know, with all these. So anything that's in front of something, you maybe cast a little shadow on it. Okay. They're small moves, but only if you want to. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I almost outlined the whole thing in a, a, shar a, a Sharpie pencil. Well, not a, 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 what, a Faber Castell. Uh huh. But then I decided to do it with the watercolor. Oh. All right. But, 
That would have been nice to see. Yeah. You did some outlining here. Yes. It can be very nice. I think that's what makes it look Van Gogh-ish. Huh. That's the Van, the Van Gogh look would be that to outline them all very outline-ish. Yeah. <laughs> sort of okay. a lot of colors. Yeah, you got, I mean, you got them all in there. You got your yellows, your reds, your blues. Huh. What else is there? <laughs> and any in combinations thereof. Yep, you got your secondaries, your green, orange, and violet. Yeah. Okay, right. thank you very much. Nice work. Thank you. Gail. Hey. You really know you you really took this into your own uh your own deal and did you did your own thing with it. I love it. Love love the little splits. This is what I was talking about. They they're so characteristic of these flowers, the little splits in there. Now I love the way you took it into your own your own composition went vertical with it, really hit this hillside. Um, <clears throat> what I might do, let's see, is, is a little more, you know, so these, so it feels like it's going in here, maybe a little bit more shading up on there. And then as they're bending downwards, you know, a little bit more Shading onto that. Right. Here too, maybe this is casting a little bit of a shadow onto this one. That one's in front of, so that's fine. But as it kind of goes into the flower, maybe maybe it'll go into shadow there a little bit more, maybe a little bit more here. So just and remember the lights. More mid -tone. What was that? More mid-tones. Yeah, yeah. And then there is also that question, is, is there anything casting a shadow up onto this? So if so, maybe. It'll kind of make this feel like it's in front of it. So that's why I did it. And let's see. That's pretty much it. I mean, any, any kind of staging you want to do with some darks is up to you. I could see a little bit more around the focal point, maybe. I, I definitely pulled some of the little stems up and over once in a while, so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Occasionally, that might be a thing. I mean, anything you want to do with the edges. They're looking pretty darn good though, especially like the little splits in there. Well, they're great. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. And Phoebe. Oh, very light. You got a lot of contrast here, wow. And I love, you see, when you lay out a wash really quick, and you just put it out there and don't overwork it. This is what you get. You get these. You get the sediment in this kind of in this particular color. Ultramarine will give you a lot of sediment. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Rob. <laughs> is this mine? Yeah. Yes, I sent you a second one, better cropped. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I got rid of the problem, children. <laughs> uh huh. Not entirely. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one way to get them out. You just crop them. <laughs> now again, um, if you take a little, a little bit of like this value right here, very light around, around the edge, it won't look so cut out. Yeah. It just needs a little shading. That's all. I had, I, I, the ones on the left, I just gave up. 
on? Well, I mean, I think you could, again, when they're overlapping, they might cast a little bit of a shadow. I don't really mind them at all, but if, if you want to tuck them in a little bit, you could maybe take some more stuff over them. You know, just... uh, okay. Maybe that was a little too, too much, but a couple more, especially off here in the corner. Yeah. <clears throat> um, that one's pretty nice. Oh, uh, that was the one I tried what I was talking about on and I discovered I didn't like it. <laughs> you don't like it, huh? Well, n n in general, it's okay, but I tried, remember I tried to take the dark in my brush and then spread the, um, oh, yeah, yeah. the pieces of the brush apart and then do the edge of the, of the poppy with it, but it's just too jagged. Yeah. Well, it doesn't bug me, really. I can see a little bit, little bit of yellow reflected light here and there. Just oh yeah. What do they call that? Spill light or um, bounce light? Bounce light. Yeah. I just call it reflected light, but um, yeah. Bounce light is a good word. I like how you kept your darks all in here. Didn't didn't need. You don't need any dark back there. It's doing its job. Um, let's see. So it's mostly edges is what I'm thinking. Okay. Mostly edges. I would take the shadow color around the edges. This one right here, maybe this one, maybe a bunch of these ones. So it's just a, just a blue. I mean, it's just a little bit of ultramarine blue. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Maybe, maybe this color right here. It's, it's the, it's not the color that'll do it. It's the value. Because yeah. what, what happens is that we have a dark step and a light step right next to each other. So we need a, something in between. Ah, uh, okay. A little medium, like a little medium step in between. Oh, uh, okay. And so you got bright, middle, and then dark. Got it. And yeah, you'll see, just, just put a little bit around the edges here and there and you know, you'll get it. Okay. This is beautiful right here. This one, see that really made that area. <clears throat> You see right here, you're doing it right here. You got a boom, boom, boom. Oh, so put the shadow not yeah. in the green, but in the on the flower. Yeah, not a green. No, the the shadow color. Yes. Okay. I kept. Oh, is it? Yeah, right. Like this color right there. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's blue. Yeah. Yeah, could very well be reflecting the sky in the shadow. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So come back. It was Eileen. All right, Eileen. I have All nothing right. to say. It's not what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Now, it looks like a lot of your shadow, a lot of your edges are really hard edge. And we just talked about that. So you see what you're doing around here on these edges? Yes. I would do a little bit more of that. Where well, you have a white meeting in the background right next to a dark, I would I'd put a little in between her, like this value right here. Okay. Now, one thing you can do, I think your shadows are a little dark. So think about possibly, if you want, taking a little white. Glaze a little white into those, you'd be surprised. Okay. It's a great way to handle it. And it looks beautiful. So it can be it can be very nice. Um, and you know what? If you if if you scrub into it and you happen to pick up a little bit of this color, the background color in your white, it'll it'll still look good. So okay. I I I think they're a little dark. Okay. That's all. Um, I think that could, I think that could work for you. So, okay. What, what did you you said it wasn't what you had in mind? What, what did you have in mind? <laughs> Something entirely different. 
You know what? One thing I like that you're doing, you have this light sky, and then you get it up a little bit darker right up next to the... That's a cool move. Yeah, I was trying to make the white back, the white oh flowers God. pop a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, you could have put the blue all over the whole sky, but you didn't. I, th I think that looks good. That's a pretty creative move. I like that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Edges and white in there. Okay, let me get my stuff off your stuff. All right. I think I think what Hector's trying to say here, everybody, is that uh, you know you can use white <laughs> if you want to, and if you do, here's a way to do it. Kaboom! Who is this? The artist? Hector. Hector. Is your I'm on. on Hector? Uh, is your mute? Yeah, my mute. There he is. George. I'm surprised. Yeah. That really pops. <clears throat> Obviously, you really wanted this to pop. Now, did you paint it all dark and then come back with the whites over it, or what did you do? No, the the darks are the, the darks darks are the last. Oh, okay. I tried to. Uh, my first glazes have brighter colors, lighter, brighter colors in the foliage. Yeah. So that you can see through some of them and then darks. Bits of, you know, because I knew there was a lot of gray greens in there. Yeah. Actually, there are a lot of different greens. Yeah, but there you are. Have to be careful, otherwise you can. Kind of red green, blue green, yellow yeah, green. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of dripping eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Soft eggs, boiled eggs. No. Yeah, eggs thrown, uh, sunny side eggs thrown into. <laughs> what do you call those? Uh, Only into letting them drip. Love it. Love the contrast. I think it really pops. And you're getting some of those little shadow colors and values into there too. A lot of rhythm. And what I think of Soutine. I know I say that a lot with your work, but I, I do think of uh, Soutine in this piece. Thank you. That's, I, that's a compliment. I love yeah. Soutine. I love Soutine. And I, I like yeah. how you pulled a couple of dark marks over, yeah. giving you that feeling of overlapping. Otherwise, it feels like all the flowers are standing out in front of all of the foliage, and sometimes the foliage overlaps it, especially on these 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 type of um, flowers. So that was a good move. Uh, a lot of times I, I can see as a, uh, when I look back at it, there's things I could do, but I'm going with this full momentum of rhythm that, that I'm into. So I yeah. just go. Uh, I guess the best thing is just to go ahead and do another one. But yeah, uh, I just want to get that out of me. Yeah, I don't ever want to lose that feeling that I had towards the the photograph. And, yeah, and it's not to make something realistic or painting. No, it's a feeling. Or watercolory. It's it's more of a feeling. It's that's what expressionism is, in my opinion. Expressionism is the it puts the feeling over. I mean, it's not that things won't be realistic, but but the feeling is more of what the viewer gets out of it. And I think when I took from, when I took from Mark Strickland, that's what he emphasized, and that's really in the beginning of my painting. And yeah. uh, I I I found that to be more easier for me to go in that direction than trying to do something, you know, like at Art Center, all of that illustration. Yeah. I, I, that isn't what I wanted to do. That wasn't fun for me. 
right. in fact, it was miserable. <laughs> yeah. But he encouraged freedom. So, uh, so I went with it and I felt more comfortable. Yeah. Well, I think we should do more expressive stuff in here. It just frees you up. It keeps the fear out of you. I, I love, I love how this one just runs into this one right here. It feels so rhythmic. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Hector. Thank you. Shelly. Ooh, ooh, Hi. I love the bees. Well, this was because I did this in watercolor like two weeks ago because oh. they're outside, but it was so fun to see the bees. Oh. <laughs> I thought so you you fun. did you did this without this class? Yeah. Yeah. And so then I tried this one in oil because I did that one in watercolor. Ooh. I love it. I was the, trying to see if I could get that papery feeling that those leaves have. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're getting it really on this middle one here. Let's see. Oh, you're red. This one right here, it's got that delicate, delicate feeling to it. Yeah, this one too. And you're what, you're, are you using palette knife? Palette knife. Yeah. How big is this? Uh, eight by eight. Okay. It's not too small. I never know with you. Sometimes you, you do these really small ones and I, <laughs> and I think it's big. <laughs> You got to look at the, look, look how she hits the dark in the background here. See how that really, she doesn't hit very much, but it's really effective. And you, wow, you got this thing, you got this thing down. Look at that. See the little cast shadow, everybody? That's what I'm talking about. It, it just grounds it. So it makes it feel like it's not sitting on top of it. <clears throat> I mean, you know, it's not floating on top over it, but it's actually right in it. Oh, nice work. Nice. Now, I love how you're just hitting all these blues. And, see, those are called accents. You throw that in there, a couple of those. You see a couple of little. It just needs to be, you know, when you have that little thing inside of you that says it needs a little something, you know. That's when you do a little abstract expressionism back there and, you know, let it happen. A little color field painting back here. Look at this silvery orange you have back there. Nice. Listen to your inner voice. I, I love this topic. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know what else might be great? <clears throat> you know those cactus right down the hill from you, um, yeah. Shelly? Yes. Are they blooming right now, or do they yeah. wait a little while? Are you talking? Are you referring to the yucca? Yeah, Shelly, you, you, like, you know, you know all those cactus down in the uh, Eden Canyon. Yes. Which ones? Can you tell me what their shape is? Is it a yucca? The, the little prickly pear ones. Prickly pear, yeah, prickly pear. Yeah, they are. Because I, you know, I haven't been able to get over there. They're still locking us out of that place. When are they going to open it up? No, you can make reservation, can come anytime. You just have to call them and say when you want to come. Yeah, but I heard they won't let me stay any longer than like two or three hours. Oh, Basha. They, what are they going to go after you? I don't think so. Don't oh, that's worry. true, huh? <laughs> and the other thing is, Rob, you can call, <clears throat> go down our Machu Picchu steps or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Maybe I'll give you a call one of these days. Okay. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you very much. Super fun. Okay, everybody. Did I miss anybody? Let me see. You got everyone. I think I did. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Rob. Have, have a great week. Yeah, you know, the reason I was thinking about those cactus is because they have beautiful flowers. That might be another fun thing. Yeah. You know, but I went to look at, uh, there are some up on Linda Vista. Um, yeah. 
uh, and I just went up there because I've been looking at them for a week or two, and they're sort of gone. 